Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements project. Today we're going to be taking this standard snapshot here. Not too bad, but there are some basic problems with it. And we're going to turn this over into this much more interesting artistic look. Now this is an easy Photoshop Elements project. Nothing real dramatic in here, and it goes fairly quickly. Okay, I'm going to start off by just deleting all of these layers over here. Let's just get those out of the way. And we're back to the original basic image. Now, whenever you edit a picture here inside of Photoshop Elements, I always recommend that you make a duplicate copy of the background layer. Just right click where it says background, choose duplicate layer, choose OK. That gives you a background copy. And then work on that background copy and hide the original. Just in case things go bad, you can always go back to that original. Now, the first step is to get this couple centered in the picture. And if I take the image here, I'm using the Move tool over here. All of the tools in Photoshop Elements, of course, are over here on the left-hand side. And that one at the top is the Move tool. And notice also that there is a V keyboard shortcut to bring that back up again. I'll grab the picture. I'm just going to pull them over here until they're about centered. If you want to get an exact center line just as reference, it's easy to do. Go up here to View. Come down, make sure that Guides is checked right here. Come down to New Guide. Set this for Vertical. And then put this at 50% and OK. And there's your exact center line. I can now get this positioned perfectly on that center line, just like that. If you don't want to look at that center line, just go back to View again and uncheck Guides. And there it is. OK, they're now centered on the picture. I now need to extend the picture over here. There are lots of ways to do this depending upon what the image is and what the content is and so forth. I tried a few on this to find the best. You could do a content aware fill, which didn't work actually. You can do clone stamping, which just takes a long time, but there's a real easy way to do this. And that's just to go back over to the Photoshop Elements tools, choose this second option right here. This is the rectangular marquee tool, and you can see it right there. Come in here and make a marquee just like this. Come up pretty close to the figure here, but not overlapping it. Make sure you do not overlap the figure. And then go back to the Move tool. Grab the control handle left hand side. I'm just going to stretch this section right there. There we go. Now, because it's relatively basic here and nothing really specific that you can lock into a visual size reference like a house or a car or something, and then I'll use the control D keyboard shortcut. And there we go. Perfect expansion over here on the left hand side. It even stretched out the shadows so the shadows look correct. Okay, next step, let's go over here to the right side and we're in the Layers panel over here. And in Photoshop Elements, you'll find the Layers panel. The button for it is down here at the bottom right hand corner. Or you can go up here to the Window menu and you'll find it right here. Layers or the F11 key also works. All of those will bring up the Layers panel right hand side. Right click where it says Background Copy. Choose Duplicate Layer. Choose OK. We now have two copies of that. On this top layer, we're going to convert this layer over to black and white. Go to Enhance. Come down to Convert to Black and White. And the one I'll be using here is just the Scenic Landscape. You can try the different styles if you want to, but I found on this one that Scenic Landscape gives us the best overall tones or values. Choose OK. We now have a black and white image. We now need to show the color image through the black and white. And for that, an easy way to do that is using a Photoshop Elements layer mask. And the button for that is right here. Click on that button and it gives you a layer mask in white. And notice that everything here is showing, so obviously the white is showing everything. The opposite is true, black hides everything. So we'll take a black color, here's our foreground color in black, go up to the paintbrush, grab a fairly large size brush, I have mine here at 200 pixels. It's also a soft edge brush, you can see that right there. And then simply on the layer mask, First, look for that light blue outline. Make sure you're on that layer mask. If you see it over here, just go over here and double click. And you see that outline over here on the layer mask side. And then paint onto the white layer mask with black. And that gives you a hole that you can see through to the layer underneath. And bring it in around like this and just fairly close to the figures. There we go. And we now have a nice soft edge hole cut in the layer mask. We can then see the color layer through that hole. If I hide everything else, you can see there's the hole just like that. So we now have the black and white outside and the color inside. But it's not a very good edge, as you see. So we're going to soften that edge way down. And that's easy to do. Go up to the Filter menu. Come down to Blur and the Gaussian Blur right here. I'll put it clear to 0 or just 0.1. 
As you move that to the right, it's going to blur out that layer mask layer. And as you blur the layer, the edge in here is going to get softer and softer. And you watch as I go up, it's going to begin getting really nice and soft right up in here. And just take it out until that edge begins to just do a real soft blend into your background, just like we have right about here. Mine's about 84.1, so pretty high on that. And that just really blurs out that edge. Gives you a nice subtle gradient change from the color of your figures over into the black and white of the background. Okay, now the black and white part is too bright. I want to darken that down a bit. So staying on the black and white layer, let's go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer and choose levels. And check that checkbox for use previous layer. Choose OK. That just links the control in here, the adjustment onto that one layer just beneath, which is a black and white layer. And now grab the mid-tone control and pull it to the right, and that darkens in the background. Now what you want is to bring it down so that the middle section here is just brighter than the outside background. You don't want to go too far like that. Oh, you might. It's a personal preference. I kind of like having it just a little bit darker. So here's about the same. And then now it's just noticeably darker. And right around in there, I think, looks very nice. And that helps to focus your attention on the center couple. And we'll do one more thing on this. Let's go back down now to the black and white layer right here. Go up to Filter, come down to Correct Camera Distortion. And in here, you can bring in a vignette or take out a vignette. It's designed actually for removing a vignette, which is a darkening on the corners. But we'll be using it just to add in a darkness in the corners. So bring it to the left just a little ways. I'd say about halfway maybe, right about here. So it's darker on the corners now and then kind of gets lighter towards the middle, which mimics the background getting lighter towards the middle for our characters. Choose OK. And there we go, just a little bit of darkening out there. And there it is. Now, if you enjoyed this project and you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. The link for that is right down there in the description. Don't forget to click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.